Assalamu alaikum. This is Megan Wyatt answering your question here at About Islam. So first of all, thank you for sending in your question. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for seeking help and resources and guide you to that which is best for your situation. So I want to impress upon you that the situation you are in with your husband is actually pretty grave. It's very, very serious. You've mentioned that you know, over the time you've been married, your husband has gone from looking at what you describe as beautiful women to looking at them online to flirting with them and text and chatting with other women. And now things have escalated to the point where he's saying to you outright that he wants to go and commit zina, rather adultery, as a married man with another woman outside of marriage. And you're in a situation where you've said, okay. So I know that you've expressed that you feel that you're helpless, that there's nothing else that you can do, but I'm here to say that that is actually not the case. So on the one hand, you're a victim of your husband's choices. You don't get to control what he does, how he spends his time, you know, who he's talking to. Those aren't things within your control. What is within your control, which will produce options for you, is what you are willing to tolerate and how you will tolerate it. So in the case of someone like your husband, where there's a series of behaviors that are going on and on and on, and they're dominating his life, they're impacting his life negatively, and he's not able to stop. Despite the fact that, you know, you've mentioned him being what you've described as an orthodox man, a man who prays his five prayers daily, someone who, you know, seeks to fulfill the commandments of Islam itself, you find yourself in a situation with him where a behavior that is haram and repetitive is dominating his life. So oftentimes we would describe that kind of behavior as one that is some form of an addiction. And when it comes to an addict, someone who cannot stop uh, their behaviors, someone whose life is dominated by them, someone who's living a double life, a secret life, one that will have a negative impact on themselves and especially the people around them, one of the things that will allow that to continue is that it flourishes in some form of secrecy and that the individual doesn't face the consequences of their choices. So initially, when you were arguing with him, when you were, you know, trying to get him to stop, that argument was actually a consequence. He, you know, would have to deal with his wife who's upset, his wife who has caught him, his wife who knows what's going on and have to try to find a way to deal with that. And of course, he probably fought back or defended himself, or maybe even, I don't know, sometimes in situations like this, people will say you're lying, or what you saw isn't right, or how dare you look at my phone, or look at my search history, you know, and they try to sort of flip the tables and blame their spouse. The reality is, is that unless there are consequences for him, the situation is going to continue, and it's most likely going to get even worse. And that is not something that you would want for the man that you say that you love. So there has to be a consequence for him in order for him to recognize that what he's doing is destructive, it's unhealthy, it's not normal, and he needs serious help. Sometimes in the case of men in situations like this, that consequence is the wife and she calls his parents and says, look, I need help. This is what's going on. She brings the local imam in. She involves a counselor or therapist. She calls her father, her brother, her uncle, someone that her husband is a little bit intimidated by, you know, that one man whose favor he really wants to stay in. And she brings them into the conversation. And you might be thinking, but isn't that, you know, revealing the sins of my husband to other people? It is, but that becomes a necessity when their behavior is destructive, repetitive, an addiction that is destroying their dunya and their akhira. So let's face it, there are boundaries in Islam and sometimes there has to be that person that brings the boundary to the individual. Those boundaries are the rahmah, they are the mercy. Those boundaries, those consequences are what gives a person the chance to turn their life around and to make toba. You know, sometimes it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will bring a person to rock bottom, that something tragic will happen to wake them up out of their sin, to wake them up out of their pattern. And other times, you know, it is that individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends into their life to be that person that shakes them and that wakes them up. And that is the person that you are being called to be.
I know that you didn't choose this for yourself. This isn't what you envisioned when you got married, but this is where you find yourself. This is one of the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in your life for a reason. You may be the person that can help your husband. You may not be the person that can help your husband. And you may even decide you don't even want to be the person that helps your husband. All of those options are possible for you. But what's important is rather than feeling that you're helpless is that you recognize it really comes down to a decision of which challenge can you tolerate the most. So on the one hand, you have how things have been going, you know, looking at your message as you've described in your email where things are better right now because you're not fighting with him. Instead, the whole phrase, if you can't beat him, join him has become your life. You're now letting your husband talk about his fantasies, show you the women he's looking at and he's talking to, and he's even openly telling you, now I'm going to go commit adultery with another woman. And you've described your heart as stone cold. You know, you're there like a friend is what you've said, like somebody who's, you know, joining in on his you know, um, his adventures basically, but you're not his buddy and you're not his friend, you're his wife and you have rights and your rights are to be treated with love and kindness and to be cherished and adored and appreciated and to have a man who is fully committed to you and to only do things within the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put, you know, in our lives as Muslims. So you can be that person who stays in that situation where you are hiding things for him, living this secret life with him, but then, you know, recognizing that that's the path that you've chosen and it's likely it's going to get worse. And you're putting yourself at risk, by the way. If he goes and starts being with other women in a physical sense, there's a very real possibility, unfortunately, that he could bring home to you a sexually transmitted disease. And that is not a situation I want you to find yourself in. You're also, if you stay on that path, in a place where you've mentioned that you're pregnant, you're bringing a child now into the world. And you're bringing a child into the world whose father is one who is committing zina and committing outright sins and has a secret life and pattern of behavior that one day, no matter how hard you try to hide that from your child, will become evident to your child. So this sits on one side. And then on the other side sits that you will have to stand up to him to advocate for yourself, your rights, your, your, your child, which is going to be born soon, and that you want a real man to step in, that he needs to get help, that you bring in other people. A massive intervention is staged and he is supported in order to heal from these you know, bad behaviors and choices that he is making over and over again. During that time, yes, there may be conflict, there may be tension, he may not be happy with you, he may even blame you initially, but... You're choosing a path where things can potentially get better in the long run. The one you're on right now, it is most likely going to get worse. So you are not helpless. It's just that you have to choose which of the situations you want and you have to consciously choose them. And I know neither of them feel like a fair choice. Neither of them are a pleasant choice. And I genuinely feel for you and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. But you do have to make a choice. You have to make a choice for what is right, for what is best, for what's going to take care of you and your child. And I'll leave you with a final thought. To love someone truly, to truly love another human being is to want what's best for them. So when we, when we say, you know, we love someone, fi sabilillah, we love them for the sake of Allah, right? To love someone for the sake of Allah is to want them to be in a situation where they are preparing well for their akhirah. And so to truly love your husband means that even if it hurts you in some way now in the temporary, it's to help him get the help he needs so he can be a better servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that you are no longer in a situation where you are harming yourself in in a way that you're just, you know, in exchange for some bare minimum level of peace and attention. You deserve so much more. You are worth so much more. And you deserve to be loved in a way where it's not just in words, but it's wholeheartedly in complete actions from your spouse. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in this path. And if you need anything further, please don't hesitate to email back. Assalamu alaikum.